historian Doug Weed. He also served as a special assistant to President George H.W. Bush. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Meg. Thank you, Vlad. Great to be with you guys. What do you think Nancy's lasting legacy will be? I think her legacy will be the legacy of her husband. Uh, uh, she understood better than maybe anyone that there's a difference between what you have to do to get elected and what you have to do to govern and <laughs> what you have to do to burnish that legacy after you leave office. So she understood that they were three different animals. And she, uh, I wrote a blog about her saying, calling it the political genius of Nancy Reagan. She has been superb at the latter, and that doesn't automatically happen. Doug, Nancy was known for being very influential during her time in the White House. Uh, prior to Nancy Reagan, I mean, you had Pat Nixon, Rosalind Carter, uh, Betty Ford, but she was really front and center for many of the decisions that President Reagan made. How did that shape the role of future first ladies? I think, Vlad, I think that uh, Nancy Reagan introduced a couple of concepts that have become permanent <laughs> in the portfolio of a first lady. One, uh, the uh, loyalty enforcer. Uh, up till that time, we had some strong first ladies start to emerge. Uh, Rosalind Carter, for example, and uh, Lady Bird Johnson, a great businesswoman in her own right. But they were absolutely united with their husband on personnel and policy. And uh, they'd say, don't talk to me, you know, go to <laughs> go to the channel, to the right channels. Uh, don't try to go around uh, by coming to me. But Nancy Reagan became a doorway in and out of the White House. Uh, and she was the loyalty enforcer. That worked very well, so well that you saw that under the bushes and you're seeing some of it under Michelle Obama. Uh, it shields the president, allows him to keep a relationship with a staffer that's released because of disloyalty or incompetence or a political issue. He can still be buddies and they can blame it on that mean old first lady. And the <laughs> same thing with policy. Nancy Reagan uh, tacked to the left on, uh, for example, pro-choice. That had not happened before. It was absolute uniform. You go back into history, William Howard Taft's wife, for example, his daughter campaigned for the right for women to vote. When it finally happened, former President Taft was on the Supreme Court then. The daughter came to the mother and said, Mom, aren't you going to vote today? It's your constitutional right to vote. She said, oh, the former first lady, I'm not. that may be offensive to your father. It may look bad for your father. He said, no, 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 it's your right. You need to go vote. So first ladies never veered apart from the president. But Nancy Reagan showed you can increase the political base by doing that. And the Bushes followed. Both Bush presidents followed the same thing, Laura and Barbara. How was Nancy's relationship with the Bushes? It was uh, uh, interesting. It'll be an interesting <laughs> study. There might be books written about it. I, I got caught between the one uh, between the two at one point. Uh, the the Bush children. Uh, were not invited upstairs into the private quarters of the White House. I can't remember now if it, pardon me, I can't remember if it was one time or never, but after one time, if there was one time, it wasn't after that. And uh, th that was an omission they felt deeply. So years later, uh, when Nancy Reagan was the chairman of the Charity Awards Dinner, we gave her an award and she stepped down as chairman during that period and George W. Bush, the vice president's son and future president, he stepped in as, as honorary chairman. So back in, two, uh, forward, fast forward to 2000 when George W. is running for president, I said to him, you know, uh, Nancy Reagan was honored when you were the chairman of the dinner, she's going to be the chairman this year, maybe it'd be a nice touch to have you be honored and it would be a kind of a soft Reagan endorsement. So we played with that for about a month, but Nancy Reagan, part of her skill at, at preserving the legacy of Ronald Reagan was to stay out of politics and the current fights within the party and it just didn't go anywhere. Doug, you first met Nancy Reagan in 1979. I remember uh, the Just Say No campaign because she appeared on an episode. <laughs> this is going to be funny. And she appeared on an episode of Different Strokes, <laughs> and I remember that very, very clearly. Having the first lady on a you know on a sitcom was pretty remarkable. How was she different from her public persona, though? 
Uh, a couple ways. I, I often will read that she um, was so devoted to her husband that the, fil the children felt estranged. But I remember uh, one conversation with her. I was with her and her husband. He was telling stories about the Gipper, <laughs> just like a, like a character out of, out of uh, uh, f fiction. So he was telling these Gipper stories. And I started to talking to Nancy on the side about presidential children because I was doing a study on it. She was fascinated. And we talked at length. And later at the dinner, the husband sat on the other side of the podium. I sat next to Nancy Reagan. She picked up the story. She was very concerned about her children, and that was a part of her I had never seen before or even heard before. But she was a mother, and she loved those children, and she just was very private about that part of her life. But that was something I, I've never seen in public or seen written about, but it was a touching moment to see. Doug Weed in Washington. Doug, thanks so much. Great memories. Thanks, Vlad, and thank you, Meg.